All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today, we're gonna start with some reassembly of new products onto our 7.3 build here. Uh, as you see with all the boxes over there, we got some parts in. It's a very rainy day today, so I figured I'd take a break from feeding our parts over there and get to putting our new water pump on this thing. I figured, why not? Uh, so we're taking the old water pump off now. Um, that's the whole reason why I didn't paint it. And we're gonna slap the new one on, see what uh, if anything you know occurs in the way of that. But I don't think so. We've got a new thermostat, which probably won't be going on today because I need. Well, I have the RTV. I just need a caulk gun to seal that properly. And I also, I these might not go on today because I need Teflon tape. But we're gonna at least get that water pump on and keep you guys updated. All right, guys. So. Got the uh, old water pump off now. Um, got it pretty clean, the surface. Uh, as clean as it's, as it's getting. It's, you can't really pick anything up with a fingernail. Looks pretty good inside, so we're gonna slap this new water pump on there, get it torqued down, and finish up putting the accessories on. So stay tuned, guys. New water pump officially on. Got the little new elbow on there, too. It's kind of coincidental, but matches the new color of the block, which works perfect. So next, just need to wait on Teflon tape to uh, put these two fittings in and put our coolant temp sensor in right there. Um, and just wanna put a little bit of silicone on this. I do not feel comfortable putting this on. I know it has a gasket, but trust me guys, these leak way too often. So I'm gonna try to get some silicone for this. We'll get those on um, another day when I have all that. So keep you guys updated here. All right guys, so as you can see, we have these manifolds completely prepped here. Um, as prepped as they're gonna get. You know, we got the major heavy stuff off, scaled them down a little bit, got all the flaky stuff off. Um, and we're gonna hit these with some high temp primer to start. And then we're gonna go with the high temp black over it should go well with that gray um so got him hanging from the tent here it actually kind of works pretty nicely um we'll spray him down so i'll actually show you guys the paint um that i'm going with i'll probably need more paint but we're gonna see so see we've got our flame proof anyways got our flame proof primer here and i'm gonna hit it with black Appears I don't have black, so whatever. I'm just gonna hit them with primer for now and we'll go out and get black. No big deal. All right, guys, so got the manifolds all done here. Um, again, I mean, this is exactly how I wanted them to come out. They're kind of like a matte black because they've got that high heat on them. I definitely will look, you know, definitely look great on that gray. And then once I got everything powder coated, just to kind of give you guys an idea. I mean, they look way more fresh than they did. I'm sure you guys saw that before. So, again, this one, all nice for sure. Got the insides taped off so it doesn't affect the gasket surfaces. And uh, I taped off the EGT Pro, which I gotta remember to order a new Glow Shift Pro. I have the gauges, but I gotta order the actual the threaded wire end for it. So, uh, we're gonna Hit the next thing for sure, and I mean, I, I've, I've been doing some little things. Like I painted up these uh, uh, pulley bolts um, and the thermostat housing bolts for the water pump. Just you know, little details. Can that count at the end? Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get back to doing whatever's next for this engine build. Well, update time here. I was getting ready for powder coat prep. I figured I'd record this for you. And um, I was like, it's funny because I wasn't even going to take it out. And I just realized, you know, I should probably send it to powder coat without the drain plug in it. Because, you know, when I take the plug out, it's going to mess up the powder coat around it. Whatever. Go to take the drain plug out and instantly hear a uh, metal noise as if my drain plug is stripped. And I also noticed it was oddly tight. Usually these are not shipped very tight at all. And what do you know? We have a completely stripped out drain bolt. And I, I mean, guys, this is literally me taking it out for the first time. I just went to literally take it out. Now imagine if I never checked it and put oil in this truck, besides the point. 
Um, yep, you see in the magnet, all metal from the threads. Then we come here. You can see it's actually the hole, the threads in the hole is not even centered in the hole. Um, and again, threads completely stripped from out of the box. And you could almost see like they had a so their socket on it or you see it's like almost like cracked there. Like someone at the factory, I mean, whammed this drain bolt out. And it's awfully frustrating because I was already um, annoyed at the fact that I couldn't get to the powder coater uh, today, or probably know I probably won't be able to tomorrow. And now, and I, I really, I, I want to get this oil pan powder coated. And now I need to wait for a return request form, and they're gonna need to send me out another one. And so we'll be lucky if we even get two powder coat this week in general. So, a little bit of a bummer, uh, but th this is just what happens with this stuff, guys, and it's the way it goes, so. <sighs> Fortunately, I think I'm gonna be, you know, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this, but thread in a little bit for those lovely people, and uh, try to get this shit back as soon as possible so they can send me a new one, and tomorrow's Wednesday, probably get it shipped tomorrow night. We'll be lucky if we have one for Saturday. If we have one for Saturday, I'll get to the powder coater Saturday, hopefully, and see if I can work something out, so. Stay tuned, guys. Uh, next, I'm probably just gonna get back to painting some stuff to get caught up here, and because we're gonna get to a point here where we're stuck and don't have anything to install because everything's gonna be at powder coat. So I'm gonna finish painting up some manifold bolts so I could probably install these manifolds soon, or at least one side. I'm gonna paint the motor mounts. Uh, I'll finish this whole water pump install here. Yeah, it's not a lot I can do currently, but painting and under valve cover stuff is just about all my options. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you guys for uh, staying tuned throughout this build here. All right, guys, we're back to the painting process here. Um, since again, our oil pan situation, and again, because we're gonna be sending our stuff out to powder coat, so. Got our pulleys as clean as they're gonna get, and I'm just gonna hit them with some black paint, um, just to make them fresh when I get them on all the new powder coated brackets and whatnot. Um, I'm pretty much just gonna paint the face, and I'll probably paint where the pulley rides, uh, just with a little little coat. It's gonna wear off anyways. That's kind of the whole point of it. So not too worried about it, but I want to at least get these faces cleaned up, and no one's gonna see the back. So I'm not too worried about that either. But they're not dirty at all. So. You get the black paint out and I'm not even gonna hit them with primer because again a lot of these have a pretty good base coat already on them but I'm just gonna hit them with some uh rust-oleum gloss black and see how it turns out um we got our studs just about dry here and i hit those with high temp um hit those with high temp just because they're gonna be going near the manifold so stay tuned guys I'll show you how these come out when they are done all right, guys, so this is how the pulleys all came out. Um, pretty nice, honestly, not bad. I mean, certainly shiny enough for me, <laughs> especially just for pulleys. You know, I'm not going crazy with it, but a lot better than how they did look. Just a nice, fresh look for them. You know, nothing, again, nothing insane. So they are just pulleys, but just want them to look fresh on the truck. So that's over with now. Uh, so... Yeah, on to, the, uh, on to the next thing for this truck. Engine, I should say. All right, guys. So I think this is going to be the final segment um, to the video of this episode of the engine build. And I'm going to really try to hit this one home. Maybe I might make it its own video of how to properly do oil cooler O-rings on a 7.3 Power Stroke. Um... Uh, a lot of people probably don't have a press at home, but I want to show you how to, I feel like most have a vice, and I want to show you how to do it without uh, completely killing yourself. So I've already got it started, but I figured I'd stop where it is. So you're going to want to put the oil cooler in a vice as so, so that you're going to, you know, you don't want to weigh them down on the center part here to dent it or cave it in because it's not, you know, thick steel. 
but you're going to want to catch it so it's right under the aluminum lip here so that when you're hitting this side it's going to get this aluminum lip's going to get caught on here right and you're going to you're not going to be working against the seals or working against the rubber mallet um because it just it takes way too much to take these ends off doing it that way so again yeah, i'm going to show you this side that's how you're going to want to catch the oil core and what we're going to do next here is dull chisel not a not a uh, sharp chisel so that you don't crack the aluminum and you're not you shouldn't be whamming on this either when you have it like this it's not going to be that hard to take off it literally pops right off you stick your chisel right in there get your hammer and tap it tap it away um and and you know Try to use somewhat of mechanical common sense and don't wham the, you know, the thing. All it should take is taps, work it around the outside there. Um, again, dull chisel, not a sharp chisel. Um, and it, the, these ends will pop right off. So I'm going to do this side, flip it over, show you the next side. I don't think I have a tripod, but I might try to set the phone down and show you me doing this, so stay tuned. All right, taking my chisel here, working it right here. You can see it already starting to move. Try not to really block the camera. See, now it's starting to hit that next, that next ring, most likely. We're coming right off with it. Like so. So, we've now got the first end off here. Not damaged at all. You know, a few little scuffs, but you still want to, the whole thing is these things love to crack. So, I'm going to flip this thing around and show you me doing it the next side. So as you can see here, I've now got it flipped back over on the vise. Again, we're going to be catching this slip on the vise of the side that is off the cooler. And we're now going to be hitting this side. Um, another thing to note, uh, hopefully it's not too late to tell you guys this, but oh, I can't really see. It's okay, I can just explain it to you. Just You might want to take some paint or a marker and just put lines, take a line here line there so when you're putting it back together you know exactly where to put it at least one of the sides i do that because once you have one side um tapped in there the other side should be flat like perfectly even with the surface the surface should be perfectly even with that so just something to note so yeah i'm gonna set the phone down again and show you me tapping the other side off chisel And we're off. All right, guys. So we are back here on reassembly. Um, I just kind of want to give you some tips and show you how I'm doing it in case you've never done this before. But what you're going to want to do is get your two O-rings. There's two new O-rings that you're going to get um, in your gasket kit. And hopefully you guys got new gaskets for the ends to the block. Um, but the green one goes first, the big thick one. And the black one goes at the end here. You're going to want to lube these with a good amount of oil to really get them uh, nice and slippery for when you're putting that end on. What you're also going to want to do is, see I got my end here, you're going to really want to get some oil inside here as best you can um, just to make sure this thing really slips on there. Uh, you can even clean up with the top here. There's usually some corrosion, which I cleaned up a little bit. And what I'm doing here is I've got... Uh, this press here and so what I just did with see the top piece is on here I lined up my two lines there yeah it's got a little 
hammer chips in it, but it's all right. There's no cracks, guys. No big deal. But very much, I just put it in like this. Put it in like so on the press. And now I first hit the left side of it. Then went to the right side of it. And it's definitely fully seated now. So now I'm just going to flip this thing over the other way. Try to figure out a way because I know this isn't flat. But I'll show you guys what I do. And press the other end on. So wish me luck. I'll show you guys how I did it when I'm done. All right, guys. So sorry for the gap in time of what's been done to it. Um, but yeah, ended up. So I got one side in with the press and it wasn't really going how I wanted. Um, so I actually totally ditched that whole uh, method. You could totally use it if you want, if you have the proper blocks. The thing that makes it so difficult is that these ends are not flat. Um, so I kind of did it the normal way slash hard way. Um, but a lot of people will tell you to use a rubber mallet because you got to be careful with these things because um, the ends are aluminum. And I'll, I'll tell you now, guys, I've done this a few times. They are extremely delicate. So don't take definitely take it into consideration. But what I did was... The problem with the mallet is trying to get over those seals is near impossible. So if you get a, unless you got a really heavy rubber mallet and you're whamming that thing, but get a piece of wood, put it over the top of the end that you're beating on, um, and just a normal big like mini sledge or something, and that wood will suppress the blow enough. It's not going to damage it at all. Um, obviously it did not. Um, and they, that that seemed to uh, help, and it's by no means easy, and it is still leaking oil everywhere. <clears throat> but um, got it on. That's that oil cooler install done for now, um, which I'm totally pleased about. So that's where we're gonna end off this whole segment, this whole video. Um, I think all in this video we got the water pump done, uh, painted some things, still prepping on this engine, um, and. Hoping to get a new oil pan soon, wherever that is, um, so we can get the stuff to powder coat. I've been say saying this forever. Um, so next up, um, I'm going to keep re recording for a new episode. I still got it because I'm going to be painting those engine mounts, painting the T4 kit, um, sorry, the T4 up pipes. And I'm going to start installing some stuff. Um, as soon as the engine mounts are painted and that oil cooler is painted, we're going together, guys. We're, we're going together, so... I'm recording all that. It's going to be a next episode. And then, you know, I'm going to finish putting the, don't worry. I'm going to put the fittings in and everything. That's just not now. I don't want to open up, because I, I want to put some Ford RTV on the bottom of the thermostat housing. And I want to do that all at once when I'm using the Ford RTV for the plenums. So that's that. So that's why it's going to wait a little bit until the plenums get powder coated. But thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Um, I know a lot of you guys are new from the video on that gray truck over there. If you guys are, I got a video coming on that out on that soon. But also, I, I feel like if you guys are into that truck, you're going to be into the shorty build that I'm doing right now. And that's what this whole engine is for. So you're going to want to stay tuned. This thing's getting fully engine ripped out. New grill, new hood, hopefully. Maybe a new whole front bumper. We're going all out on this yet again, even though I've already gone all out. And there's a whole build series on this truck too. And I'm trying to make playlists for you guys so that you could actually see all the builds in uh in, in one spot for each playlist because there's a lot going on on my channel. I've had a lot of builds on the channel. So stay tuned, guys. New episode on the engine build coming up. New episode on the Nardo Gray truck. Whole lot of stuff going on. So you're going to want to subscribe and put your bell notifications on so you know when I post a video. Thank you guys for watching again. And I'll see you guys next time.